You're not a blue blood. Blue bloods have a history of winning. You don't have enough championships. All words that were said leading up to and until the end of the Men's March Madness basketball tournament this past year, and all words that have disappeared since UConn's utter dominance of this year's tournament all the way up to their 16-point win in the national championship game. A blue blood in college basketball terms is a Division I basketball program considered to be among the most elite historically or currently, and that is exactly what the UConn Huskies proved to be this past year. The UConn Huskies went into this season unranked and were at one point the number two team in the nation, and then, then, we, then we did skid a little bit, I'm not going to lie, but we ended the season ranked 10th and went into the tournament as an underseeded sleeper of a four seed. What I'm about to say is very important, so pay attention. The first round, UConn beat Iona 87-63. The second round, UConn beat St. Mary's 70-55. In the Sweet 16, UConn beat Arkansas 88-65. In the Elite 8, UConn beat Gonzaga 82-54. In the Final 4, UConn beat Miami 72-59. And in the Championship game, UConn beat San Diego State 76-59. With this run, UConn became only the fifth team ever to win every game of the tournament by double digits with an average point differential of 20, which is the highest of all five of the differentials. This would make this year's UConn team, by the numbers, the greatest team of all time. And if that isn't enough for you, UConn became the first team ever to hold their opponents under 35% shooting from the field in every game. The next team that comes the closest was Ohio State, who ended up losing the championship game in 1961. Which means that UConn, this past year, had the greatest defensive performance in NCAA March Madness history. Let's continue by answering ourselves a question. Why didn't people think UConn was a blue blood? And the answer to that, I feel, is very simple, being that they aren't in the typical Power Five. The typical Power Five conferences are the ACC, SEC, Big Ten, Big 12, and Pac-12. UConn is in the Big East, who despite not being a Power 5 conference, have won a total of 7 national championships over the last 25 years. Well, technically 6, because UConn won one of theirs while being out of the conference. Despite this recent success, however, Power 5 conferences have remained unchanged, and it even took winning a 5th championship in 25 years for UConn to be considered a blue blood. And yes, you heard that right, UConn has won 5 championships since 1999, which is more than any other school during that period. And to take it further, only 3 schools have more championships all time than UConn, those being UCLA, Kentucky, and North Carolina. If you would like to look at those teams' numbers from the last 25 years, what you would find might surprise you. The three teams mentioned have a total of 5 championships in the last 25 years, with 3 of them coming from North Carolina and 2 from Kentucky. That means that 24 years ago, when UConn won their first national championship, the three most successful college basketball programs of all time combined for the same amount of championships as the UConn Huskies alone. To further add on to this, North Carolina's first championship came in 1957, UCLA won their first in 1964, and Kentucky won theirs in 1948. So yes, those teams do have a longer history of winning than the Yukon Huskies, but let me ask you a question. What matters more, winning in the past or winning in the present? Maybe it's just me, but I feel the answer to that question should be simple. It shouldn't matter if you have a history of winning if there are teams currently better than you. It shouldn't matter if you won a championship 50 years ago and you haven't won one since, and it definitely shouldn't take away from the fact that there is a team who's won 5 in the last 25 years. I made this video not only to remind all of you that the Yukon Huskies should have been a blue blood after their last championship, but that they definitely are now, but also to maybe convince some of you to look at a history of winning differently and value winning in the moment when it comes to success. A team shouldn't be considered elite if they consistently get to the one seed but always get bounced out in the first couple of rounds. A team shouldn't be considered a blue blood if they haven't won a championship in the last 50 years. A team definitely shouldn't be disrespected if they've won five in the last 25 years. And honestly, I, I, I'm going off script here, but I, I think it's warranted. I don't think that people should you know, just base the good programs off of if they have a history of winning. Yes, they will recruit better. And honestly, them not winning all the time is partially because they get a lot of top NBA prospects, which means that they don't always stay for their whole career. But still, if you bring in that talent year in and year out, I personally don't think that there is an excuse to let somebody who's not a blue blood and not from a Power 5 conference to have more championships than you in the last 25 years, to have more championships than anybody. 
in the last 25 years. People think Duke is great. People think Kansas is great. North Carolina, Kentucky, Villanova. But UConn has more championships than all of them since UConn won their first championship in 1999. So uh, really just ask yourself, what is success? Honestly, th this goes beyond basketball. This goes beyond sports. What is success? You can't live in the past. You can't say, oh, I did this 20 years ago, so I'm still great. No. Be in the moment. And I, I know this isn't even about sports anymore, but it's true. You, you can't live in the past, no matter what it is. You need to live in the present, and not in the future either. Living in the future is bad. You can't be, oh, I'm going to do that next year, tomorrow, the day after, next week. That's bad. Live in the moment. Do stuff in the moment. Be successful in the moment. Thank you.